Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Graphics card prices suck. They absolutely suck in August 2024, but we are gonna take you through the best GPUs to buy in August of 2024 if you need one. We'll also take a look at Amazon Prime Day deals. There were some amazing deals. Did you get one? And what kind of deals can you expect for Amazon Prime Day in October and Black Friday? We'll also take a look at what GPU features that you think are the most important through audience polls. What do you think in terms of the price you wanna pay, the features like V, RAM like DLSS and FSR. If you get value out of this video, give it a like. This makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. With that, let's jump into it. Let's start off actually looking at Amazon Prime Day prices because I know I get a lot of comments. Oh, I'm gonna wait for Amazon Prime Day. I'm gonna wait for Black Friday. There will be another Amazon Prime Day also in October. I mean, I don't know that for sure. Amazon hasn't announced it, but that's what they've been doing for the last several years. And people are always wondering, if I wait, what kind of discount can I get as opposed to just buying something right now? So I wanna show you, these were the best deals on Amazon Prime Day in July in 2024 because the last time we took a look at GPU prices was just before Prime Day. And honestly, you can often get good deals just before those sales as well. So this was the 6750 XT, got all the way down to 269. And I will also say this is not just one of the cheaper ones, this is actually the more premium ASRock Challenger Pro. Now they're trying to close these out so it doesn't surprise me that they're just basically taking a GPU that's probably sitting on shelf, not really selling at the higher price point, I think it was like $340, and kind of cutting it down to this price. $269 for a 6750XC is insane, as we'll see later in the video. Of course, if you're looking for something that's this generation, looking to spend a little bit more money, you can get a smoking deal on an RX 7800 XT. Again, a more premium model. This is the Power Color Fighter 3 fan model. There are some cheaper kind of two fan models out there that also got to that, you know, $460 price point, but this was the lowest on Prime Day and it was a great deal. Here's another part that if you have it in your market, you should definitely consider. We'll talk about the price right now, but $339 for the RX 6800. This is the non-XT version, still with 16 gigs of VRAM. Insane deal for $340, this level of power. This was a, what, a seven, $800 GPU during the shortage. And then of course, people are always wanting, who gives better deals over the sales period? Is it NVIDIA, AMD, Intel? I don't have any Intel deals up here. They, their deals on GPUs, frankly, weren't that great. But NVIDIA has been known to be super stingy. Well, on the other hand, AMD typically does make it rain in terms of the discounts it offers. NVIDIA doesn't usually offer discounts. My understanding is usually the board partners, like the manufacturers of the GPUs themselves, this is like Zotac or Gigabyte or MSI, will kind of cut their own deals with retail through the supply chain and cut some of these prices. We did see a $499 RTX 4070. That was the Gigabyte model. That was actually a pretty good deal. Again, nowhere near what the deals AMD was cutting because that's a weaker card than the 7800 XT with less VRAM, but you can get some of these other cards like a $569 RTX 4070 Super. Outside of that, no big NVIDIA deals. Of course, we're always trying to understand what you're looking for in a GPU, how much you want to spend, what features are you looking for, like ray tracing, DLSS, does in VRAM, does any of that matter to you? So we did a series of polls with our audience, including this one that got 27,000 votes. I just want to share some of these quick results. How much are you looking to spend on your GPU? I was surprised, 27,000 votes here, $500 to $899 was the largest segment, and it was double the size of the next two segments, which were kind of equal, either $900 to $1,100 or $300 to $499. So really that $500 to $899, at least for our audience with the 27,000 people here who took the poll, kind of makes some sense. And then I was really surprised, under $300, Less than 10%. Not shocked, obviously, that only it's about 6% are looking to spend RTX 4090 money. Then I asked you, what's the most important feature when you're buying a GPU? And this was an absolute bloodbath. I asked ray tracing, DLSS, frame generation, anything else. Raw FPS just absolutely crushed this one. 17,000 votes in it. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, gamers, when they're buying a gaming GPU, kind of seems logical, right? The number one thing they want is the most FPS. So having that be a thorough bloodbath, I did a second poll, which is, okay, what's the second most important feature when you're buying a GPU? Forget FPS, let's, let's move on. VRAM, number one. VRAM, 74%. Clearly, the audience is getting the message that eight gigs is no longer enough. They don't want to buy something now and feel like they're left in the lurch later. DLSS only 9% and other things literally less than 10%. So honestly, and remember, this is the second most important feature. The number one was FPS by a mile. So really it looks like FPS and VRAM are the most important things to buyers, at least in our audience. All right, now for the painful part, man, GPU prices absolutely suck. They absolutely suck. Look at that. Look at all that red out there. Really not a lot of price adjustments going on. This period I often call like the pain period for consumers. 
It happens every year, pretty much right around August after all the discounts around Prime Day finally expire. Some of those discounts linger on quite a bit past uh, Prime Day, but this is the punishment period where retailers basically don't have any additional discounts to offer through the retail chain. And so they're just going to charge you whatever they can for these GPUs. Now, we're not going to go through each and every model like we typically do. Just saying right now, especially on the higher and GPUs, I have no idea what AMD is thinking. We are expecting our 8000 series GPUs to offer that same performance as the 7900 XTX or XT for a significantly lower price point out there. So not changing those prices at all, big question mark. The one GPU out there that does make maybe a little sense is the 7600, finally coming down to $232, which makes it competitive with the 6650 XT at $219 out there because they have almost the same level of performance and also the RTX you know, 4060 out there and it has AV1 encoding. So at that point, I would consider it. However, it's only got eight gigs of VRAM. So I probably just spend a little bit more money and go with a 6750 XT or 6700 XT, which continues to be excellent value at $289. Speaking of GPU prices suck and I have no idea what this company is doing. <laughs> Intel, what do you think? out there. I mean, I'm just going to, I almost fell out of my seat when I, when I put these together, $279 for an A770. I'm sorry, after you were charging 269 for it, you're going to raise prices. The A750 is back to 189. The A580, which had been a banger of a value, 169. I'm sorry, but at that point, I can't recommend it. If you're not really going to save any money or you save $10 over a RX 6600, get the 6600 that's just going to work in every single game. No must, no fuss. Stop jacking prices up on us. And if you expected NVIDIA GPU prices to come to the rescue here in August of 2024, LOL, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? This is a video we're talking about here. They're busy making a bajillion dollars on AI GPUs. They don't have any time for gamers to cut your prices out there unless you want to buy an RTX 4090. And really the only price drop on the 4090 is one of the uh, one of the more entry level, entry level with <laughs> air quotes models out there came back into stock and it just sold out. And that's why it was uh, $1699. And, but back in June, it was $1649. It was even cheaper. Other than that, the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte, what we've seen is one of the cheaper models, uh, cheaper gigabyte models that had sold out, has come back into stock. Two thumbs up there. Remember, these are all listed down in the video description. Let's jump the best graphics card 2024 in August. So if you're looking to buy a new GPU, these are the ones you should be looking for. If you're not familiar with how we do this, we basically have this big spreadsheet that's available down in the video description. You can check it out, put your own prices in. These are current US retail prices for new cards and their eBay prices for the used cards, average eBay prices. We basically track them all by performance and price. We get a price to performance and we're gonna break them out into every category. Here we go. All right, sticking with our audience preference, we're gonna jump over the $200 cards and we're just gonna go straight to the best. New GPU under $300 in 2024. So this is where they have at least eight gigs of VRAM or more. And basically the price is under 300, except I played with a little bit. I've added in the 7600 XT. It was the only card that was really being cut off there. So I wanted you to at least be able to see how bad a value it is right now at that price. Honestly, if you're looking for something super cheap, yeah, the ARC A580 is still not bad out there at $169, so not phenomenal. The ARC 6600 would probably be my pickup under $200. So no must, no fuss, works with everything. And it's only $10 more. As we approach Approach $300 if you have the 6750XT in your price category out there. Pretty good price to performance out there, $2.16. Not as stellar as it was at like $2.69, but still incredible performance. 1440p levels of performance out there. 12 gigs of VRAM, which really separates it from the pack. Honestly, it's the best price to performance 12 gigabyte or larger GPU on this chart right here. RTX 3060 12 gigabyte, not that terrible now that you, if you can pick up that $264 model out there and you only have around $250, although I would urge you to stretch if you can to the 6750 XT. If that's not in your market, 7600 XT, it's fine. It's a fine GPU. It's got 16 gigs of VRAM, just not great price to performance right now. Jumping over the best 1440p GPU in August, 2024. So this is where it's under $600. The GPU score is hundred or more. So that's like an RTX 30 60 since that's what we kind of peg everything to that'll get you 60 fps across a wide range of titles uh, these are mostly harder to run single player titles at ultra details ultra details if you're playing like fortnite league of legends those kinds of games overwatch 2 you're gonna get tons and tons of frames at 1440p no problem and of course this is also where we have at least 12 gigs or more of vram and we've already talked about the 6700 xt 6750 xt 
insane value. Another one that if you have it in your market, the RX 6800 is kind of a unicorn right now. There's only one model, even in the US right now, that's sold at Newegg. That would be my strong pickup, especially if you value VRAM, which I know so many of you do out there. If you don't have that in your market, I do think the RX 7700 XT is easy, an easy choice right now. Around $374, I would love to see that come down to more like 350 AMD if you're listening out there. I think that's where that GPU needs to be sold right now. But 374, it's a small price premium, great performer GPU. As we get more in the mid range, you're looking to spend like 500 ish dollars. The 7800 XT, 7900 GRE, the same price to performance. Basically, the GRE is 10% stronger than the 7800 XT, and it costs 10% more. So you just kind of pick whichever one you want, and they both come with 16 gigs of VRAM. This is where I think NVIDIA is really, the weakness of their lineup is really starting to show. Yes, you get slightly better performance out of the 4070 Super than the 7800 XT, but it costs $100 more and it comes with four gigs less of VRAM. So what are you really getting there in the long term? I think that's just a big question mark. I'm not saying don't buy it. If you're one of these folks who absolutely has to have NVIDIA for some reason, that's the card I would recommend. I'm just saying they're not very good values. Moving over to the best 1440p, 240 hertz GPU in August, 2024. So this is where the GPU scores 180 or greater. And we have still 12 gigs or more of VRAM and we've dropped the price requirement. So this will go all the way up to an RTX 4090 basically in terms of our performance. Now we've dropped out some of the weaker cards so we can kind of get a clearer picture here, especially if you want to push lots and lots of frames and you want to spend more like that, you know, 600 to $800, the RX 7900 XT. You're like, Jason, the 4070 Super's got better price performance. Yes, but very close. And the 7900 XT has a lot more performance to it than the 4070 Super does. Now, I do also like the 4070 Ti Super here, though not necessarily for 1440p gaming. We'll talk about 4K gaming in just a moment, that is where maybe DLSS plays a slightly uh, bigger role in this. But I think for 1440p, I do like the 7900 XT. It's a question out there given that we are gonna get RX 8000 series GPUs in January. That is still like four or five months at least away. So if you're gonna buy one of these things, I still think it's a pretty good value at 689. The rest of the cards on this list, I would really only consider for 4K gaming. Jumping over the best 4K graphics card in 2024 in August. So this is where the GPU score is 200 or greater. And we've got 16 gigs or more of V RAM. And if you're wondering how many FPS this translates to for like the 7800 XT, that'll get you somewhere between 60 and 70 average FPS across a wide range of harder to run single player titles at ultra details with the 7800 XT 16 gigabyte there. I will say if you're gonna play games like Overwatch 2, CS2, those kinds of more lightweight titles, you get tons and tons of frames at 4K out there. I love the GPU lineup out there, 7800 XT, 7900 GRE for more entry level stuff. And remember, Upscaling at 4K works a lot better than it does at the lower resolutions, obviously. I personally game on a 7900 XT at 4K. I do use FSR where it's available. Phenomenal gaming experience. I wish it was a little cheaper out there, but honestly, if you're looking to pick something up, play games now over the summer, what's left of the summer into the fall, and you don't want to wait for RX 8000 series GPUs, I think that's a really good pickup. On the NVIDIA side, 4070 Ti Super continues to have my recommendation, particularly if you are looking to do any kind of really good ray tracing out there, any kind of detailed ray tracing, that's my minimum pickup. And honestly, I don't know as you get that much more out of going up to the 4080 Super for $200 more, though again, it's your money, you can certainly spend it and get a little bit more performance. I'd skip the 7900 XTX at this point. I, that GPU just, I don't really understand why it's as expensive as it is. The RTX 4090, I just also feel like if you're the kind of buyer who's gonna have that kind of money, you probably have 5090 money sitting around. Although I do know 5090 might be insanely hard to get, of course, when it comes out, it might be scalped for months on end. So maybe you just decide, forget it. I'm gonna go with a 4090. Let's play everyone's favorite game. Should you buy now or should you wait? Well, man. If you didn't pick up a GPU on Prime Day and you needed one, oof, ouch, ouch, ouch. Big mistake, big mistake. I would counsel you don't make another mistake by waiting too long again, because if we look at what are we waiting for right now, right? Well, we're gonna have, in terms of sales, we're gonna have Amazon Prime Day in October. They haven't announced it, but they do it every year, so we know it's coming. And then we, of course, of course, we've got Black Friday and the holiday shopping period. Typically, at least last year, the deals on Black Friday were just about what they were for Prime Day, so you'll have another kind of bite at the apple, but you're only talking about five to 10% on a GPU. Bigger discounts on other components, by the way, way bigger discounts on other components, but on a GPU, that's about what you're looking at there. Then, of course, what GPUs are we expecting? RX 8000, 
50, 90, 50, 80. Those are 2025. 20, That's what all the rumors point to. Could they come out sooner? Of course they could come out sooner. Of course they could. But that's what the current rumors point to. The only GPUs that might make a difference right now and we might get in 2024 that I think are more reasonable is Battlemage. Uh, there have been reports that there have been shipping manifests seen for several different models of Battlemage, that they're shipping them out. Who knows? I think the big challenge here is, of course, we know the least about Battlemage and what their performance is going to be. So it is kind of hard to wait for something that hasn't been announced. So my advice here, especially at the, let's start with the budget category. If you're looking to spend $200 or $300 on a GPU, there are good values out there. The RX 6600, two thumbs up. The 6750 XT, 12 gigabyte, four thumbs up, basically. That's a great value GPU. Then if you don't have those in the market, uh, the RTX 3060, 12 gigabyte, I think still remains kind of a stalwart out there around 260 ish dollars if you don't have the 6750 XT out there and you can't afford to jump up to the 7600 XT. I don't know why AMD is trying to charge so much for that GPU. Those would be my other ones to move towards. And the 7700 XT, excellent value by the way, at about $360. As we get to the mid range, like 500 to $800 price point, I think there are some really solid values. Will RX 8000 series bring better value? I'm going to tell you, after seeing the Ryzen 9000 pricing, I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical that AMD is going to price those RX 8000 series GPUs where they need to be actually priced. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll finally learn their lesson, but I feel like I've been burned so many times. I'd pick up a 7800 XT or 7900 GRE. I think those are pretty good price to performance right now, and you will have a fantastic time with them. That's kind of the key here. As we move up to the high end, the 7900 XT, I think, eh, it's still a decent value out there. The 4070 Ti Super, I think if you're a ray tracing enthusiast, that's the one I would pick up. The higher end GPUs get super hard to recommend though at their current price and performance level. I might skip them and I might wait to see what the 5080 and 5090 do in 2025. Again, that's if you can wait. If you got value out of this video, hey, please give a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content just like our CPU analysis right here. We go through all the new CPUs, including Ryzen 9000, in terms of the best price performance, gaming CPUs right now, and I identify what I think those CPUs need to be priced at to actually be competitive in the market. Check it out. We go through the best gaming CPU, and we'll catch you on the next one.